Hi everybody. Um, I already recorded this tutorial once. I recorded the whole tutorial, but I didn't do any screen capture. So I just have the selfie cam. <laughs> so I have to re-record the whole thing. As you can see, if you look in the background here, I'm in the process of moving. So everything's in a state of disarray. I'm a little disorganized. And I, I'm doing this tutorial because I just finished another job where I had to do a lot of this because I was doing GOH tracking and I often will do GOH tracking when, the ch when it's an untrackable object. So all I can do is just kind of recover its, you know, X and Y uh, coordinates on screen, in 2D screen space, and then I'll hand keyframe the Z. But that's not what I'm covering. I'm covering the 2D tracking aspect of that. I have to do a lot of 2D tracking to make that happen. And it'll often be just one tracker. So I've, I've picked a shot that I shot in Hong Kong a while back, and, uh, and I'm gonna show you how I do supervised 2D offset tracking. So there you go, that's it. And you've probably done offset tracking of your own if you've ever done any compositing. So here's my shot. The first thing I'm gonna show you, uh, because this shot is really long, it's 750 frames long, and, and it's, it's got way more information than we need, or at least more footage than we need. So um, let's pick a section of the shot to do. So this looks good to about here, because we have these two women walk in front of our guy, and the feature I'm gonna track is going to be his ear, the tip of his ear. Because sometimes we have to track the tip of people's ears. So here we go. Uh, let's go back to the beginning of the shot. Let's see how far into the shot. I think I'm just gonna track it right from the beginning, right up until they cross. That's probably good. Right to 228. So if you hold down the shift key, and you mouse over to the very edge of your time bar, you'll see your mouse changes into a little left-right arrow. And when it does, you can left-click and drag, and you can actually set your time bar very quickly that way. It's the same thing as if you went into shot, edit shot, and you say start frame, end frame, and you can set those manually here. This is just a graphical way to do that, and do it very quickly. So let's rescale that, and we're gonna rescale this one. So great. So now here we are, we've got our guy. What's the first thing we typically do? We usually make some sort of color correction preset with a little more contrast to make the tracking a little easier. Uh, so let's do that now. I'm gonna make a new preset. I'm going to call it, as usual, high con, high contrast. Let's get rid of resolution related and let's get rid of lens stabilization and region of interest related. We only want color related and blur related as usual. Okay, there we go. So that's our high con. Um, and I'm gonna drop the highlights. When I say drop the highlights, I'm actually dropping the clip point on the highlights. So every time I say drop the highlights, I'm talking about dropping this number which is the clip point of the highlights. So you're basically redefining uh, a new range for the image. So you're lowering the uh, exposure latitude of the camera, or what some people would call dynamic range. I hate that. Anyway, <laughs> um, so we're gonna lower our clip point on the highlights. We're gonna lift our gamma up a bit. And uh, let's, just to make it a little juicier, add a little saturation. Juiciness is saturation. Okay, so there we go. We're gonna flush all those frames from the cache. Yeah, it looks pretty good. That's like a nice pleasing color and whatnot. Uh, okay, so let's get started. Let's just jump into it. Let's go into the tracker room. I'm gonna zoom in on his ear, and we're gonna track the tip of his ear, the top. Let's hit the C key and click. And create a tracker. 
we're gonna shrink the pattern size, and we're going to increase our search area. We're increasing our search area because, yeah, that's probably good. I mean, the camera's kind of moving around a bit. I, of course, shot this, and the camera work isn't super great. So I was holding in my hands the very same Blackmagic 4K cinema camera that I'm shooting this with, but it's a very awkward camera. And I mean at some point to get the Blackmagic pocket camera, the 6K pocket camera, but uh, now is not that time. Why? Because I'm moving. Look at it. <laughs> anyway. So, all right, let's get to work here. Uh, what's the other thing I typically do? I'll set this to four. So make a keyframe every four frames and then smooth in between those keyframes every four frames. All right, here we go. So I'm just gonna tap the D key as usual. One, two, three, four, and it makes a keyframe. And then I'm gonna hit the five key. Now I've said this before and some people have uh, taken that to me and hit the five key on the numpad. Don't hit the five key on the numpad. You want the five key on the character side of your keyboard. The one with the little percentage sign on it. So I hit that five key and it keeps the tracker centered. So it's going to stabilize the image around the tracker. And we're, we're just tracking. Oh, look, went off, went off target there. So I'm going to shift right click on key now to blow away those bad keyframes. This is where, this is where the problem is. The problem is that you can't track through her hair. And this is where the offset tracking is going to come in handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say offset. Click on that offset and you're gonna see uh, the pattern, the little symbol that occurs in, in the pattern. And it looks like a little TIE fighter or something, but that's the actual tracker. Your pattern now, if I grab the pattern and just move around, it, it moves everything. So I don't want that, I'm gonna undo that. If I hold down the shift key and I move the pattern, I'm gonna move the pattern over to the corner of his glasses where it meets his hairline, and I'm gonna track forward. And now you'll see the actual tracker goes behind her hair, and it kind of stays on target with his, with his ear. I'm gonna nudge this a little bit, and then back up and then key smooth through there. So I'm just tracking and I'm gonna keep tracking. And then when the ear comes back into the frame, this is where I can create a keyframe. And I'm gonna turn off the offset. And now the tracker is gonna pick right up on that ear again. So that's how I do offset tracking. We're gonna keep going. Let's just keep tracking on his ear. And uh, I think we're gonna have another occlusion area here. Oh, yeah, there it's, it's happening. So now I'm gonna click Make a keyframe on that frame. I'm gonna click offset. And this time, you'll notice that it left the pattern offset to where it was before. But now I can move the pattern elsewhere. So where's a good place to offset it to? Let's, um, let's start here. We'll pull a couple frames out there. And then I'm gonna shift Click it over here. And go on his hairline again. And keep and stay on target on his ear fairly well. Oh yeah, there we go. And now, now it's behind her ear entirely. Um, let's make a keyframe here, and then it jumps off for some reason, and it, it's just because the pattern is bad, or it could be the uh, search size, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to hand keyframe it anyway. So I'm going to. Right click on key now. Uh, I'm actually gonna shift right click on key now. There's only one frame there. So, uh, so we're just gonna keep this going. We wanna keep that on target on his ear. We don't, we don't really care about the pattern in the search area. We care about his ear. That's the thing we're tracking. So when his ear starts coming back on, let's keep our tracker, which is that little, um, I don't know, that symbol that looks like uh, two things going this way and two things going that way. So we'll just keep it like that. And then once we get to this frame, I'm gonna make a keyframe, 
just by clicking in this window. Uh, or you could hit the now button, just click on that. Whatever the case, turn off offset on this frame. Tracker returns to the actual tracker position, so the pattern detector. And now we're just gonna track forward on his ear to there. I just made a keyframe. Right click to get rid of that keyframe. And again, there's gonna be another occlusion. So let's just do this for the sake of practice. Uh, I made a keyframe already. So now I'm gonna hit offset and let's pick another pattern. So I think maybe, uh, usually the closer you get to the tracker, the better. You don't wanna do offset tracking on things that are really far away because the parallax and whatnot will push your tracker out of position. I mean, you don't want that. So here we go. Let's track forward at that corner of where his glass, his frame of his glasses meets his hairline. And we're coming back. Uh, that's good. I'm gonna make a keyframe there. I'm gonna turn off offset, track forward. I think we're gonna have to go right back into offset mode again, make a keyframe there. Turn on offset and again, pick another pattern that's gonna help us get through this. Let's uh, scooch this down a little bit to get that on target. Scooch it down. Now you gotta remember, you're tracking things that are you can't see on, on screen. So if your tracker is not quite in the right place, that's okay. Nobody's gonna see it because it's behind something. But you still might need that tracker because it might be attached to a larger object that you can see moving back there. And if, if you do have that, you're just gonna hand keyframe things into place anyway. Synthize in that way becomes a really great rotomation tool. And you're basically doing 2D tracker assisted rotomation. Someday, I hope that we can get even better GOH tracking type tools that will allow us to do this for whole rigs. It'd be great if I could do this and just control a joint on an elbow or a shoulder. That's a whole other discussion. Let's keep doing what we're doing. Um, I could probably turn off the offset here. So I'm going to shift right click on now to blow away those frames that I made while I was talking to you. Uh, and I'm gonna turn off offset. And I'm gonna nudge the tracker up a little bit because it was not quite on target. All right, so let's make a keyframe here. I'll move that over. The reason it's slipping is because as he turns his head, more of the background is coming into, uh, into play. You can, correct this problem by making a few keyframes on your pattern size. So if I go here and then make the pattern size smaller, we're, we're not gonna capture that changing background that's going behind his head. So we're, we're doing pretty well there. And then uh, I'll make another keyframe on the pattern size. And then when we get back over here, I'll make the pattern size get bigger again. So you can keyframe the pattern size, you can keyframe the search area size. So if you have areas where the camera whip pans, you can make your search area big. And where you have areas where the camera's just gently moving around, you can shrink your search area and that's keyframable. Just like your pattern, just like we saw there. Uh oh, people are coming into shot. So now, now what do we do? They're gonna totally cover him up. There's nothing to really offset track. This is the second thing that I do. So it's not just offset tracking. We're gonna talk about the by hand button. So I'm going to keyframe this here. I'm going to shift right click on key now to blow away all the keyframes that we made. Um, I could do one frame of offset, but it's really not gonna be worth it. So what I'm gonna do you can barely see the ear there, so I'm gonna make a keyframe. But on this frame, yeah, it looks like it's probably okay. Yeah. Uh, on this frame, I'm gonna click, after I made the keyframe, I'm gonna click by hand. Now what does by hand do? I'm gonna track forward, and the tracker just sits there. It doesn't do anything. But when the ear comes back on, move the tracker back into position and compare these two frames with the A and F key, as usual. And when I do that, like let's back up to here 
And let's turn off that five key. It's gonna be very subtle, but you can see the tracker moving to the new position. So I've keyed it by hand from one position to the next. So you could actually, if you wanted, hand keyframe every single frame. Or you could do it on twos or fours or eights. In that way, it becomes very much like Roto. But it's gonna be, you know, synthize really excellent 2D tracking tools that are gonna get you there. Okay, so now that we're on this frame, I'm gonna turn off by hand. And it's gonna bring the tracker back into normal tracking mode. I make a keyframe there. And hey, I'm just tracking forward until this frame where I'm probably gonna to need to do a little bit more offset tracking because there's just a, another frame in, in this whole shot. But I'm gonna hit the offset button. I'm gonna shift, left click. And you can do that in this window up in the upper left. You can do it there or you can do it over in the main window. So you can click with the left uh, mouse button with the shift key held down to move the pattern without affecting the tracker center. Okay, let's track forward one frame. That's the end of the shot. So let's lock that tracker. So I'm gonna hit the space bar. That tracker is great. It's like sticks to his ear. So if we wanted at this point to have like some head geometry that we wanted to track in there, we could drop the a point on the geometry that we have for his head on the tip of the ear and then we can hand keyframe the rotation to match while letting synth eyes keyframe the x and y uh, coordinates if your uh, coordinate system is y up but that makes it a lot easier to track shots like this where it's basically an impossible shot to track that's that's it that's kind of all i wanted to cover um not, not, not too shabby. Let's look at that again. Yeah, there it is. We've tracked his ear. And that's how the offset tracker works. And that's how I do offset tracking. Now, other people might use the offset tracker differently than I do. Uh, I'd love to see that if anybody wants to post a video of like, oh, I use it this way. Then that would be great. If you feel like you learned anything today, please hit the like button, which will help me to appease the YouTube algorithm gods. You could also hit the subscribe button too. That would be, that would be great. It would be very, very nice of you. Very kind of you. What else? Um, leave your, leave your comments and your questions in, leave your question, leave your questions in the comments and leave comments in the comments. Allow myself to introduce myself. Uh, and I'll try to respond to them as best I can. Um, and, uh, and I guess that's it. So, until later, I'll see you soon.